So today we're going to change the fluid on the 2016 Sierra. Um, this is the got the 8-speed 8 8L90 transmission in it. And the main reason I'm changing the fluid is because it's got the transmission, uh, the torque converter shutter that so many of these vehicles uh, suffer from. And it's driving me crazy. Uh, it, if, you, if you don't know what that is, it actually feels like uh, it, well, it's a vibration. And it feels like that your tires are literally getting ready to vibrate off the truck. So, and what it is is the, the uh, torque converter, and they uh, have a special fluid, this stuff right here, that they recommend, and they claim that takes care of the problem. So, I've got eight quarts of this stuff. That's about $120 worth of fluid. And it's a little procedure to... to uh, change the the fluid on these vehicles they, there's not a dipstick um, so I'm going to suck the fluid out and I specifically bought an oil extractor did a review on this already um, so we're going to suck the fluid out I'm going to keep track of about how much fluid comes out that way I can put about the same amount back in before I check the uh, the proper fill level I've got the truck level. That's very important that the truck has to be level to uh, to do this. And I've just got it driven up on some some wood uh, to give me about another two inches of uh, clearance. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get this done. I'm also going to uh, pull the fluid out of the cooler lines. I want to get as much of the old fluid out as I possibly can. So I'm gonna. I'll show you how I'm going to do that, and uh, then we're going to take the pan off, which is another little bit of a chore, and we'll get this done. So let me get set up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, cooler lines off right here, and uh, I'm going to put a hose on one end, and I'm going to suck the fluid using that fluid extractor. Um, out of the lines and the cooler that'll evacuate the cooler the lines and everything so that's the plan looks like it's a 10 millimeter yeah. Okay, that should do it. Just trying to find me a hose to hook up there. I'm just going to leave that one open and it's just going to pull the fluid right out if all goes as I hope.
trying to get as much fluid out of this system as I possibly can. Okay, that should be about it. About everything. These are O-ring, they're, they're just O-ring fittings. So just be careful sticking them back up in the hole. Alright, so now the next job is going to be sucking the fluid out of the pan. And to do that, we're going to take this shield off right here. Looks like there's three 10 millimeters all together. There's two up top. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so what you got now is here's the, this right here pops up out of here. I'm going to get a little tool. No, no, I'm not either. I don't know if you just saw I was able to pull that up in my finger. little plug so now I'm going to drop the hose in, down inside here and suck the fluid out of the pan Now you don't have to suck the fluid out of the pan before you drop it, but it's going to make this a lot less messy of a job, is the only reason I'm doing it. If you don't have a fluid extractor, obviously you're not going to do it this way, but luckily I've got one. So this pan should be pretty much empty. At this point, the cooling cooler lines should be pretty much empty. Other than what's in the torque converter, all the fluid should be pretty much out of the transmission and what little bit is up in the uh, transmission.
Okay, so all the fluid sucked out. Now, we're going to zip these uh, 10 millimeters out. What I like to do is leave one bolt in the in both ends until I'm ready to drop it. And the exhaust is in the way most of the time, so I don't know. I may have to uh, pull down on this exhaust. I've seen people pry them down, so I don't know. We'll tackle that when I get there. <coughs> Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but I just kind of cocked it to the to the uh, passenger side, and it come right down. There's the pan. It doesn't look that bad. They say the gasket's reusable, and I am planning on reusing it. Uh, if you didn't see the video on the rear differential change, the gasket's back there on the differential's reusable, too. And uh, it is not leaking. So, it is a risk. I mean, obviously, that if you uh, don't feel comfortable reusing a gasket, then by all means, buy a new gasket. They're about 30 bucks for the for the OEM gasket. But you can see, I mean, this is still raised up. There's metal washers. It's met, it, it, It's got a metal washer impregnated in the rubber. That way you can't really over torque it. You'll torque it down to the metal washer, but then the gasket itself is uh, compressed the proper amount. So it's not like you can over torque it and just squeeze the gasket to pieces the way you used to to do so let me I'm gonna get the get some rags we're gonna get this cleaned up and uh, it's got your typical uh, powdered transmission yucky yuckiness there we're gonna clean those magnets up the fluid doesn't look too bad but it's it's a little dark and uh, hopefully once I get this fluid changed, the uh, shutter will be gone. If it is, I'm going to definitely let you know. If it's not, I'm going to let you know that too. So I'm just going to I'm going to turn the camera off. You don't really care about seeing the cleanup of the pan. And then uh, whenever I get ready, I've got a new filter I'm going to put back in it. And then we're going to get this done. All right, got the pan all cleaned up. Just wiped it out with some rags. Um. Don't forget to put your magnets back. I've got those cleaned up. <laughs> put the pan over here where the magnets are. And like I say, as long as you don't see metal chunks or metal chips in the pan, 
you're fine as long as all you see on these magnets is just a little bit of real super soft fuzzy um, you know powder like uh, debris that's normal so don't worry about it as long as there's not chunks or chips or anything in the bottom of the pan you're probably gonna be fine so I'm going to clean these magnets up a little bit better, stick them on here, then we're going to put the filter on. I got the gasket all cleaned up. Gasket looks perfectly fine. So, uh, and I am going to drive this for a couple weeks before I post this video. If it leaks, I will let you know. That way, you'll want to buy a gasket. I'm confident this gasket's going to be fine. So let me get the magnets cleaned up, stick them on here. I'm going to also clean, there's a little bit of fluid underneath the truck. I don't want to lay in it, so I'm going to clean that up too. Then we'll put the filter in and put the pan back on and fill it up. Okay, we're getting ready to take the old filter out. Put the new filter in. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit of the fluid off the old filter and I'm going to put right here on this O-ring just to make it slide in a little bit easier. Okay, people, like I said, the exhaust is kind of in the way, and I've seen people pry, but I want, yeah, hopefully you can see the way this is going to go in. The, the way it came out is I kind of cocked it over here to the, to the uh, passenger side, and it popped right out of there, so... No need to. Okay, let me get me a torque wrench. <clears throat> we'll get these things torqued. Okay, you got the torque wrench. The torque on these are 89 inch pounds. So now, we're going, to feel it. we're going to see about how much I got out of it, and it looks like I got about, let's see, that's a gallon and a half, six, probably about seven quarts total. So we're going to pump in about seven and a half quarts, and you've got to bring this up to operating temperature. Not, I'm sorry, not operating temperature. Um, uh, what is it? I think it's like 131, 131 degrees to 149 degrees or something. I'll look. Um, I'm going to use a scan tool. A lot of people will use a uh, infrared thermometer. The problem with the infrared thermometer is that not all transmissions uh, will be close to what an infrared thermometer shows. They, they recommend a scan tool. That'll read the, the temperature. 
So let me uh, let me get my transfer pump set up, and we'll start pumping some fluid in. And this is also very important. What you want to get for this eight-speed transmission is the blue label LV8 uh, automatic transmission fluid uh, HP, the mobile one. The part number is 124715. You do specifically want to get the blue label. Don't make the mistake that I made. I found some the LV ATF HP fluid on Amazon. I didn't realize that there was a black label and a blue label. The black label will work. It is rated for this transmission, but the new service bulletin specifically says the blue label, uh, Mobile One, HP Fluid. The reason is because this black label stuff is hydroscopic, so it soaks moisture up, and that's what they're blaming uh, on the shutter. Uh, the cause of the shutter is moisture being absorbed into the fluid and uh, causing it to shudder. So make sure that you get the blue label fluid. I just wanted to point that out because I bought, uh, uh, it was about $80 for the black label. And uh, then I, as I before, which was about a month ago, and as I was doing my research, found out it was blue label specifically. So I had to buy some blue label stuff. This stuff was about $120 for uh Two cases. There's six quarts in a case. And even the bottles will have the blue label. The the black label looks identical to this, except it's got the, instead of blue, it's black. And the part number is different. Like I say, that's the part number you want. 124.715. So I'm going to get, so I've got my transfer pump there. I'm going to put four quarts in to start with. That's one gallon. I'm going to pump one gallon in. Let me show you what we got. So I got two gallon jugs. One gallon, or one jug is pretty much full. The other jug is almost full. So I'm guessing we've got about seven quarts, which according to the book, that's about what should have came out with the uh, cooler lines and the pan. It's about seven and a half quarts. So I'm guessing that's about seven and a half. I'm going to put about seven and a half in it. We'll run it up to temperature and uh, go from there. Let me get let me get this jug full. Okay, I got the transfer pump full, and I got some pretty good pressure on it. So let's climb underneath here and pump it in. I got exactly four quarts in here. So I'm just going to stick the end of my tube up here if I can. Let me see. And away we go. Now I'm probably going to have to pump this before it's said and done, but and that's all there is to it. So however you need to put your fluid in, you know, whatever kind of transfer pump you, you're you going to use. I, I made this one because it just makes it so much easier to pressure it up and then pull the trigger and let it pump in. Uh, I've got a video on how, how I made this if you're interested. As you can see, I mean, there's not a lot of pumping going on right now, but the flood's going in. You can see it going down. I will have to give it a couple pumps to get it to go a little faster, but no big deal.
Okay. We're going to go fill the jug back up. Okay, we're going again. Going to put about seven and a half quarts in it. That's about what came out. Got about another quart and a half left. And then we're going to start it up, run it through all the gears, get it up between the hundred, I think it's 131 to 149 degrees. Uh, take the plug out here and it should run out. It, well, it should be right at the top of that plug. So it'll, if it's got too much in it, it'll, uh, some of it's going to drain out. And then uh, whenever it starts trickling out is when you stop or when you put the plug back in. Truck does need to be level. Got about half a quart left. I'm going to intentionally put a little bit too much in, ho ho I'm hoping, that way uh, whenever it starts coming out, it'll uh, drain a little bit out, hopefully about less than half a quart, I'm hoping, and then uh, I won't have to put any more in, because I want to put all this back together. That way, I don't have to mess with it whenever it's hot. I hope that makes sense, because since it's got to be running. Uh, it kind of splattered out on me. Now I'm going to put this plug back in. I did that because it, it got to the bottom and started splattering. It's not actually up to this hole. To put this back in, you just push it in, and then you make sure you push this down. Hopefully that's coming through. That's all there is to that. Um... Go ahead and put this back on. The easiest way to put this back on, I'm thinking, I left the bolts in up there, is I'm going to put the side bolt in. That way it should be relatively lined up. And these other, these other three, or the other two should kind of fall right where they need to be. And the easiest way that I that, that I've uh, noticed that these bolts came out of, if you have a swivel ratchet that's probably going to be the easiest way for you you can get to those top bolts and the side with the same tool You want to make sure you put the heat shield back on because that's where your Cadillac converter and stuff is. You don't want it heating that transmission up. Uh, 
Right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start it up and let it come up to operating temperature. I'm not. I'll, I'll show you that on the scan tool, but it's going to take a while for that to come up to the proper temperature. Be right back. Okay, so I got the scan tool hooked up. You can see here the transmission fluid temp is at 95 degrees right now. We need it to be between 131 and 149. Now, something else you can do is if you've got a if you're doing this on a truck, yeah, can you see that? You actually have to where you're able to pull the uh, transmission temperature up uh, on your on your instrument panel. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I've got my foot on the brake. I'm going to run it through all the gears. Go to neutral, reverse, drive, manual, park. Do that a few times just to make sure that the fluid is circulating in the transmission 100%. Sorry, that's uh, the light kind of dims it out. We're at 99 degrees, so it's coming up relatively fast, I guess. Raise the RPM a little bit. You also want to make sure as it's running that you don't have any leaks. Okay, so I'm just going to let it come on up. Let's compare the scan tool. Should be pretty close to the same. Yeah. 102. So I'm going to let it come up to about 130 degrees, then I'm going to climb underneath there and we'll finish this off. Okay, we're sitting at about 126 degrees. It's been about 10 minutes. 127. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I got the pan underneath there. I'm going to go ahead and by the time I get down there and we pull the plug out, It'll probably be about 131 degrees or so. So that's going to be close enough. So let's climb underneath there. Let's see what the... Yeah, showing about 127 up here on the instrument cluster. So you're going to take this plug out right here. Make sure you got a pan.
you got a rubber seal on the plug, so you should be okay. This only torques to about eight foot, uh, eight foot pounds. So I'm just going to let that run out until it gets to a trickle. Make sure the truck is level. That's that's important. It is important that these uh, vehicles, that you don't have too much fluid or too little fluid. It is in park and the engine is running. That's important too. Now, if no fluid came out, I would have to pump some in over there on the other side in the hole. And I didn't want to have to do that. And I don't want to have to put all that stuff together whenever the exhaust is hot. So I wanted to make sure it was had, a, if anything, a little bit too much in it so that it would run out the way it's doing. That's it. That's how much we got out of it. So, and like I say, I will drive it for about a week or two. That shutter was there every single time I drove it. So, I will definitely know, and just out of curiosity, our temperature is exactly 131 degrees. 133, basically, now. So, yeah, I will drive it just to make sure that the shutter's gone. If it is, I will let you know if this fixed that problem or not. That way, if you have the shutter, uh, you, you know, you'll be confident to know that this fluid change will take care of it. This is a 2016... GMC Sierra 5.3 with the 8-speed transmission. Um, it is four-wheel drive. Anyway, that's about all I got. You guys take care. Okay, so it's been two weeks since I've changed the transmission fluid in this uh, 2016 GMC Sierra. And the shuttering, 100% gone. That definitely fixed the shuttering 100%. And also improved the shifting. It, well, it improved all the shifting, but mainly the shift from first to second sometimes was so harsh that uh, you thought that it was going to do some damage to the transmission. Also, sometimes going from second to first uh, was a pretty harsh downshift. That's completely fixed too. So, not only did it fix the shuttering, but it fixed the shift that only happened occasionally from first to second and second to first. Uh, the shifting issue was a, a lot more intermittent than the shuttering. The shuttering was always, always there. So that's completely gone. So the transmission change definitely fixed that. And also, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, so I reused the transmission gasket and there is absolutely zero leaks. So don't be afraid to reuse the transmission gasket. Just make sure that you take a look at it. Make sure that it's still nice and pliable and that it's still, you know, raised up where it's supposed to be and it's not smashed down when you take it off. So uh, just a quick update to let you know that everything worked perfect. I'm very, very happy uh, with this truck again that the shifting is completely completely fixed obviously the question is for how long well as you can see there's about uh, almost 84,000 miles in this truck my plan is to at a hundred thousand I've got about six quarts of the transmission fluid left 
I'm going to buy another quart, maybe two quarts, and I'm going to do this again. It, unless it starts shuddering before then, then I'll do it uh, earlier. But that's the plan. I'm, I'm going to wait till 100,000 to go ahead and do the same thing again. Uh, if it happens before then, I'll, I'll do a video to let you know that all this is is a temporary fix for it. But we'll have to see. Uh, we'll see if this is a long-term fix or not. Anyway, that's about all I got for you guys. Take care.